Are you happy? <laughs> Can you get it? Woohoo! Okay. Ah, oh, I just threw half a cow hoof across the room. Sometimes when you're bossed around by your little dog, you just have to go with the flow. Hi, welcome to Fiber Love Diary. I'm Trish if we haven't met, and if we have met, welcome back. Hello, how are you? It is a sunny day, the birds are singing. I actually opened the bathroom window while I was getting ready so that I could hear the birds singing even though it's cold out there. <laughs> I didn't care. I've been pretty busy lately. I'm getting ready to warp my loom, but before I do, I wanted to spin the March Paradise Fibers package. I've been thinking about it since it showed up. I don't remember, I think I got it. Did I get it on St. Patrick's Day? We got this black. Oh, I don't remember what it is. Is it BFL? I can't remember. Anyway, you can go back to the video where I unboxed it if you want to find out what this fiber is. It's very, very black. It's a, just a nice true black top. And then from Compass Moon Studios, we got an array of dyed locks. Uh, I believe it said wool and mohair on the packaging and uh, these remind me of the Hulk. I can't help it but I love purple and green together. You guys know I've talked I talked about it when I unboxed it. Some of these are like almost a little bit of a kind of a magenta I guess you would say. I mean there's just every kind of color of green and purpley in here and I don't use locks that often so I thought I would use this we're gonna do an art yarn I'm gonna core spin I've been thinking about it since it showed up and since I opened it during this last like two weeks in between when it got here and now I've been thinking should I add some more to it like what exactly how do I want to spin this I got three things out that I may or may not add as I go so I got out this which is, this is a commercially blended and dyed Firestar. I don't know where you can buy this anymore, but you used to be able to buy it on Etsy in a bunch of places. You probably still can. I also took out some of the, some of the silk waste that was in my stash and uh, it's like celery green. There is some kind of baby blue in here, but it's mostly green and then this, I guess it's like a lavender or a lilac color, right? I'm not sure what's going in yet. We're just gonna have to play it by ear. And then I took out this rose lilac, it says on the bag. This is Angelina. I will probably not use these both, but I may use a little bit of both because then I get the purple and the green. While I spin, I'm gonna use a technique called auto wrapping. And I am going to use an, uh, this is like a machine embroidery thread. It is called color S077. <laughs> it's a pretty vibrant pink. I really wanted it to pop because, you know, the auto wrap, you want it to add like a whole separate element. And so for me, that means that in this case, the color really needs to pop. Against the black, this is gonna pop like crazy, but also against these locks, even the purple, this is really going to pop. These are the two colors that I originally pulled out to use for the auto wrapping, but I felt like if you put these up against the locks, this one is just clearly gonna jump out better, so that's how I chose it. This is getting used for sure. These are both a maybe. This is a maybe, but it's kind of also a probably. These are just break up really tiny. I don't know what process these come from exactly. I guess maybe when they're spinning it, but this is unreliably dyed. It bleeds sometimes. So that's something that you always wanna keep in mind when you're using sorry silk, silk waste, whatever. It can bleed. It's notorious for bleeding. This is so light and the rest of this is so dark that I'm really not worried, but I'm just letting you know, if you're ever gonna use any of these, they're notorious for bleeding. So my current plan 
is so and I say my current plan because if you know me you know sometimes I get part way in and my brain like starts turning a problem over and comes up with a different way to do it at the last minute but my current plan is to make a bat on my blending board because if I do this on my drum carter the the locks will get pulled apart as they get pulled into the carter and even as the carter passes the liquor I want to kind of keep them a little bit more a little bit more intact if I do it on my blending board I have more control over exactly where they go now there are three ounces of this so I'm gonna split it into three different sections and just try to make three bats with it I'm going to you've seen me do this before I'm going to roll the whole bat up like a cigar or I don't know what else would you roll up like a like sushi we're gonna roll it up like a roll of sushi and then I'm gonna spin it directly off the end so that it gets it changes the way that the fiber comes up in order if that makes sense I think it's gonna make sense when I do it that's enough about what I'm going to do let's just get going first I'm gonna just divide this up I'm not gonna weigh it I'm literally just gonna do it in thirds there's the first one here we are
purple. This is gonna make a really textured yarn. Oh, oh these are like, hmm. Okay, got it. This is gonna make a really textured yarn, which as you guys pretty much know, I mean, I do do texture, but this kind of texture, not so often. So I think it's good for me to do something a little bit different. doing more okay I lied maybe just one of these we'll split it and put some here and then some right there and when I push the locks in I do just push in and then go down a little bit I just totally stabbed myself <sighs> this is why we get our tetanus shots when we're fiber artists don't skip your tetanus shot. I'm good I'm gonna leave it so okay sometimes when I use my blending board I will draft a bit I'm, I'm not gonna be drafting much this time I don't really want to because that's gonna pull the locks apart and kind of like blend them in and I don't really want to do that however I am going to get under here and get all this black out before I start the next one. So I'm pulling it up first and then I'm rolling it up so it's not super tight. But then on the end, I do want it to kind of like seal. Okay. So what I'll do now is take this off my dowels and we'll be drafting right off the end. Just like this. I know you can't really see all the stuff inside, but as we spin, it's gonna be really cool. So I'm gonna do the other two, and then we will get to the wheel.
We've got the Traveler out today because it has the Jumbo Wooly Winder on it. This wheel has not been used in months at least, so I'm gonna drop oil in a few places. If you hear noises, I'll stop and oil it. I have no, I haven't used it, like I said, in a while. I am gonna use this for a core. It is like a charcoal gray cotton, unmercerized cotton, so it'll be a little grippier. Once it's mercerized, it's like slicker and shinier. So I'm gonna use that. A lot of people use boucle. There is nothing wrong with that. I just don't have any. I don't buy it because I don't like it. <laughs> and uh, I mean, that it works great. So there's nothing wrong with that at all. I am also gonna auto wrap with this. So I'm gonna show you how that looks. This is my core. It is gonna be to the side of me where I will be drafting. And what will happen is it'll come up off the cone and over my leg, okay? And then this is gonna sit on the floor directly in front of the orifice. Once I get it going, I'll just like lay it into the yarn and let it get caught and start wrapping itself. I've gone through my loop and looped back for my core. And what I'm gonna do is like draft a bit of this and then my auto wrap yarn like i said is going to go straight down in front of me right in front of the orifice i'm going to wind it around the tension knob just to get going okay and i'm not going to go fast i don't want to go fast i want to switch these so that this is out in front look at the sun catching that okay that's how I want it. It's going to have like some texture and that is fine, but you can see I'm just drafting it. And then letting it wrap around the core. Oops, my core was tangled up. There we go. Okay, so I've got it going. I am gonna now take my auto wrap, the yarn I wanna auto wrap with, and I'm going to just go around once or twice. It's literally gonna catch itself. I'm all done. I don't know, they don't look as pretty on the bobbin. I don't know, maybe they will come across really pretty. 
But I'm gonna wind these off. So I'm gonna set up my Swift. And then right after that, I gotta pack this order over here. <laughs> Now I'm gonna film it a little bit on the Swift and then I'll take it off. I gotta soak it. And I know you're probably like, that's gonna come out, isn't it? It will not. And then when it's woven into something, it really won't. So some of these are kind of tail spun, but not really purposely. I just let them hang out if they wanted to. Here's another one. Look at this little cute green curl poking out. It's just so deceptively just crazy easy to create these yarns. And it's so interesting to me how that's currently kind of the way that the style is going. Uh, nothing wrong with it. They're, they're cool. This is very cool. Give me your ideas for a name for this yarn. The only thing I haven't decided yet is when I weave it, actually vote on this too. When I weave it, should I weave a scarf out of it or should I make a pillow out of it? Because this is some wild stuff. <laughs> I am gonna go soak this. I'm gonna fold it slightly in hot water. I've done that before. I'll link a video where I did that recently. I'm done. I brought it to show you. I wish you could see this in person. I really do because the sparkle is pretty cool. And it turned out really cool. So I got 90 yards exactly, and I'm going to, look, see there's tails hanging out like I wanted, but it'll be a little while probably before I weave it because I want to spin some warp, and I'm going to weave it on my ridged head a little. I will film that when I get to it. It was very fun, but like I said, this is so super easy. Once you have the very basics of drafting down, anyone can do this. You do not have to have any special skills. You barely have to have skills. <laughs> That sounds bad. Lately Art Yarn, I can't say it's calling my name, but sometimes I see things and I feel like they just tell me that's what they want to be. I've talked about that many times before. And these locks definitely told me that they wanted to be Art Yarn. I hope you guys have a great week and I will see you next Sunday for the live and next Tuesday with a new video. Have a great week and I hope you're doing some creative fun things. Thanks, I love you, bye.